Brilliant. This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Anissa Sauerland. How are you doing? Doing very well. Doing very well. Had some big news, obviously, regarding um, Sauerland boxing. Uh, I think it broke yesterday or the day before. Um, Chris Eubank Jr., the latest addition to the team. Um, just tell us, first of all, how that all came about. Um, well, number one, we, we've always been a big fan of the Eubanks. Um, obviously, you know, me and my brother grew, grew up watching a uh, senior fight. And um, we'd, um, we'd, we'd had contact with uh, uh, Junior. He, he fought on one of our shows in 2012. Uh, I think it was 2012, a lot. No, that's too long ago. I'm just trying to think how long ago. Anyway, a few years ago when he was starting out, I think it was in Denmark somewhere. And um, I, I was um, quite impressed with his talents then. Um, and then, of course, my brother worked with him uh, during the Super Series. And from there, you know, the contact was made. Um, I think the trust was there. Um, we delivered him some very big fights. Um, and now, uh, you know, if the way I look at it is, is, is he's, um, you know, he's, he's one of the most uh, popular and, and most talented boxers in the UK. Why was now the right time? Because as you say, the trust has been built. You've been aware of him for a long time. Why has it now become a more formal, more focused relationship? I just think it's a good, good time to, uh, to, 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 it just, you know, when, the, when, the, when, when the stars align, you know, it, it just sort of all made sense. Um, and my brother obviously has a lot of contact with them. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it just made sense. Um, and I think it made sense for all parties. Um, we were looking for a new, you know, a new signing. We were always looking for new signings, but um, a signing like this doesn't come, come along all the time. Um, and, you know, like I said before, I think he's, he's one of the most marketable guys in the UK at the moment, um, outside, let's say, uh, a fury in a Joshua, um, I would say marketability wise, he is um, he's, he's the leader of that pack just behind them. And we haven't seen you guys promote a show in the UK for some time. I mean, we haven't seen a lot of promoters promote in the UK for some time, but that's a separate issue. What will the signing of Eubank Jr. allow you to do on that front? Well, I think it opens up a lot of doors for us. Um, people want to work with Eubank. Um, and, you know, I, I know that he's very popular amongst broadcasters. Um, so, you know, look, we've, we're, we're going to we're gonna go look at all our options, um, and there are quite a few, um, and then make a decision. Um, and then, yeah, promote in the UK and, and, and work in the UK. Is it with another promoter? Is it possibly? Is it with, you know, just us on our own? Possibly. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of big fights out there. And... Um, I think he, personally, I think he's he's now he's he's middleweight suits him um, a lot better than super middleweight. I think you know in the years to come he could still go up to super middleweight, um, but he he he's at his best at middleweight. You mentioned broadcasters there and uh, Chris's popularity among them. You obviously got the zone launched globally in November. Um, in the UK, particularly with Canelo against Callum Smith and since delivered Garcia against Luke Campbell as well. At UK, almost UK prime time. I don't want to say prime time. I think it kicked off at 11, 30, 12 o'clock. But still a time that people weren't, you know, having to set their alarms for. One ninety nine a month in the UK at the moment as well. Before we talk about whether Eubank could be a good fit for the zone, just tell us what you think of their launch and, and what they're doing at the moment globally. Oh, I think it's very, very exciting. Um, I've, I've already subscribed. I'm very impressed with the service. Um, I'm impressed with the technology. I'm impressed with the clarity of the screens. I'm, 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 I'm impressed with the functionality of it all. Um, and, um, you know, for me as a promoter, it's always good to have new new broadcasters, new new mediums of getting getting your, your, your content out there. Um, if you look at boxing as a content, which it is, um, I think, I think they, they, they've they've come in at the right time, and I think one point one pound ninety nine a month um, is is a great uh, pricing point to start at. I mean, you know, that's uh, the cost of uh, God. I don't know, a pint of milk, half a pint of milk, <laughs> depending where you go. Depends where you shop. Yeah, uh, I think you're yeah, probably more uh, the Waitrose end of the market compared to me, but <laughs> no, nah, no, 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 no. no. 
Love a bit of Lidl. <laughs> <laughs> Good to hear. Um, talking of Eubank Junior, though, the zone, if they're lacking anything at the moment in the UK, is that kind of prime time UK shows. They have they haven't yet linked up with a promoter who's available to do UK prime time shows. Obviously, they work with Matchroom outside of the UK. Matchroom is still working with Sky Sports here. Is that a possibility for you guys? You said there's been a lot of interest. Is that a possibility that Eubank Junior, we could see him on the zone? I mean, we're going to, you know, as we're going to definitely give everyone, a, 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 you know, a, a chance to, 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 to discuss Eubank Junior with us. Uh, we haven't made up any, uh, we haven't made any decisions yet. But, um, you know, of course, you know, the, the Zone's a massive platform and we've worked with them with, with, with the, well, my brother's worked with them with the Super Series. Uh, we worked with them through Eddie as well, of course. And, and, and like I said previously, it's a, it's a great service. Um, and, and, you know, Eubank, with his social media following, it, it, you know, I, it, it, it's, it's, it's a good one. It's a good one. I don't, I don't know what their strategy is. Um, you know, my, my brother deals with the TV side of things a lot more than me. He's got 20 odd years in TV rights, um, sales and, and, and marketing. So he, he is, um, he is the TV guy. But, um, you know, like, we, we can either, you know, I, I think Eubank could fit in with any broadcaster at the moment. And, of course, when we found out that he was um, joining you guys, the stated intention was to win a world title or multiple world titles at middleweight. Looking at the landscape at the moment, some of the middleweight champs are aligned with PBC. They don't really do much in the UK, of course. But then you've got Demetrius Andrade. We're not sure whether he's going to move up or not. But if he stays at middleweight, he's a zone fighter. And does that stuff all come into the equation when you pick a co-promoter or a broadcaster? Who's got which fighters and which fights you want to make? Well, I think the good thing about Eubank is that he is, um, you know, he can he can work with anyone. Um, so he could go and, you know, let's say we wanted to fight the Charlos and, you know, work with PVC or uh, Canelo or uh, 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 Andrade or, or, or Murato, who I believe is with... Uh, is he a top rank? Is he? I, I, uh, but you, you know there are a lot of um, there are a lot of options, um, and 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 we are we are our job now is just to steer his career in the right way. You know he's at his peak at the moment, and he needs to have the right t- right fights at the right time. And, and I, I believe that that's what we can do, and, and we've got proven track record on it. Um, and. You know, me and my brother have always had the ways of sort of manoeuvring a little bit under the uh, airwaves, um, you know, and, and, and being able to steer uh, fighters' careers in a, in, a, in a good direction. That's what we're going to continue to do with uh, Eubank. How involved, if at all, was Senior in the negotiations and how involved, if at all, will he be going forward? Um, I, I think that's more of a, a question for my brother because he has a very good relationship with Senior. Um, I, I do as well, but I don't. I don't. You know, I, I don't speak to him as as, as much as my brother does. Um, but I understand. You know, he's still he's still active. He's still active. And I guess the key question: When are we going to see Eubank Junior back out? We didn't see him at all last year with the pandemic and everything else. Previous to that, um, through no fault of his own, a fight that he had lasted. Nowhere near as long as he would have liked. He needs action. When, when were we likely to see him? Mar- Mar- March, April time. COVID, COVID providing, you know. Um, but I think, you know, where I see, see it is March, latest April. And is he keen to jump straight back in with a big fight rather than, you know, a rush shedder? I mean, look, I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of tune-ups when you, when you come to, to, to like I said, the, the peak of your career. But if nothing's out there, then, then we'd have to look at, you know, getting some run, rounds under his belt. Um, but I, I, I do think there are a lot of very good fights out there at the moment, and even domestic fights as well. You know, there's a lot of good domestic fights. Is one of the key things with your strategy for Eubank Jr. to give him activity, to have him out more regularly, because he seems to perform better the more often he fights or the more frequently he fights. Yeah, a hundred percent, I agree with that. And um, you know, I think I think it's it, it's key. When he was uh, in the Super Series, I thought he, I, th- I think he fought uh, what three times in a year, um, and I think you know he looked really good after that. Um, so, 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 yeah, the key is activity and the key is to, um, 
sorry, my daughter's going to come in. Um, so this, this homeschooling, oh my God. Um, it's killing me, killing me. Uh, my, my kids are going to end up in prison soon. Um, so uh, the, the activity, sorry. Um, you know, he, he, with the Super Series, he, he fought three times, I believe, in a year. I, I haven't got the facts in front of me right now. And I think that really suited him. Um, I think being out for one year, um, that, yeah, did, definitely didn't suit him. And I think he, um, you know, I, I think, I mean, look, he's, he's still got a lot left in his career and he, he needs to be busy. And is this something of a statement signing? Because you guys never went away. You've been promoting regularly, obviously, Germany, Denmark and so on, at least until the pandemic and, and even after when um, lockdowns and so on were, were lifted. But we haven't seen much of you guys in the UK. Cal has obviously been working very hard with the WBSS. This seems like a real kind of we're back and we mean business type of signing. Well, I mean, you know, we, we've got a lot of um, very, you know, premium talent in our stable. Um, we we did uh, whittle down the numbers quite a lot because there was a lot of dead weight in our stable. Um, now we have some real, real talent. We, 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 our aim now is just to work with very, very good fighters, high-end fighters. Um, in Germany, we used to have a few fighters who just you know fringe 12 15 maybe 15 fighters who are who are very good and and, and have a marketability they have a uh, um, a selling point um, and, and and they're very talented and, and and that's that's what we want to be dealing with um and I, I don't want to sp spend my time running after uh you know guys who just won't make it you know I want to I want to I want to just focus on the, on the real talent um, you know, we have Philip Pergovich, obviously, who's who's you know making leaps and bounds in the in, in the heavyweight division, ranked at IBF number five. Uh, Zach Parker, WBO number one. Um, we have uh, Bradis, um, and then obviously Eubank, and then we have uh, guys coming through like uh, Abbas Barrow, who's training with Adam Booth, um, Leon Bun. Um, Dennis Radovan, then we've got the youngest uh, female fighter of all time in Germany, Sophie Arlish, who's who's un unbelievable talent. Um, and then and then um, we've got a few very good Scandinavians, uh, including Kim, a couple of others um, coming through. So we're happy where we're at at the moment. You know, we, we don't, you know, and, and yeah, of course, Eubank definitely put, puts Team Saland in your mouth again, definitely. Um especially in the UK. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a definitely a marquee signing, but we, we do have a lot of talent, um, including Eubank. And does it make it more likely that we might see the likes of uh, Philip Hergovic and Maris Bredis fight in the UK? I think I think the good thing about the, the, the public here is um, they like good boxing. Um, and I think Bredis and, and, and Hergovic, they bring good boxing to the t table. Um, I think Philip as well. He's, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's quite a character. Um, he's got that, you know, rivalry with, well, kind of rivalry with Babich. Um, he's got, um, you know, he, he, he's definitely, people know who he is now. And, you know, he's, he's, he's definitely going to be, you know, knocking on the world title door very, very soon. Um, and yeah, I mean, the UK is one of the biggest markets at the moment. So, why wouldn't we want to be doing stuff here? Great stuff. Well, it's been a pleasure to speak to you. Um, congratulations on the signing, if that's the right word to use. It's a big, big Thanks, deal. Adam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> very, very. I think everyone, I think it's captured the imagination. Yeah, I mean, look, we, we wanted to start the year strong. Um, I think a lot of people thought that, um, well, I was one of them. I thought, like, look, it's going to hit midnight and suddenly COVID's going to disappear. <laughs> It didn't happen, but I am optimistic. I'm definitely a half, uh, what was it, class half full kind of guy. Um, and I feel like this year is going to be a good one. A good one for everyone and a good one for the world and a good one for Team Sauerland, a good one for boxing. Uh, because 2020 was a bit of a disaster, I think, for everyone. So, um, oh, yeah. Yeah. And a good one for seconds out. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I'm doing something with you guys again now, uh, end of the next, end, end, end of the week on, I think, Thursday or Friday. I'm Friday, something. yeah, yeah. We've got our live show um, kicking off at 12.30 on Friday. 
Nicely. I'll dress up a bit, yeah? <laughs> I was going to do the plug for it, but you've, you've beat me to it, so I appreciate oh. it. But yeah, Sorry, we're, we're doing a live <laughs> show, looking ahead to all the great things we've got to look forward to in boxing in 2021, and you will be a very welcome part of that. Cheers. Thank you very, very much, Danny, yeah? Thanks, Nisa. Enjoy homeschooling, yeah? Enjoy homeschooling. <laughs> Good luck. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye-bye. Bye-bye.